go, that's the final sheet. Alright, hello one and all, welcome to episode number 16 of Poetica here. Shout outs, everyone. So, we've got a few things to um, just update you all on. All of these iron blooms here, we have 8 24 ingot iron blooms there, so just shy of 200 ingots of iron in bloom form. We processed all the limonite that was up here on the live stream um, at the start of the week. And this is all we've got left, just a little bit of pyrite there. We have some other ores that need processing here as well, but yeah, that's, that's just the kind of odds and ends. But I think we'll leave the processing of these iron blooms for another live stream because big epic metalworking missions like that are quite chill on the live stream, I find. So one of the other things to update you on from the live stream is that we did start getting some trees growing over here. And we actually have... Oh yes, we've got another batch of charcoal on the way. We actually have, I think, a really sound idea for a giant tree farm design. So we're going to potentially try and get that going today. You'll notice there's no sapling on the end here. This is where we had our mangrove tree growing. And you'll notice that the, ma the shape of these mangroves at the bottom is quite irregular. There's actually quite a lot of space where the roots come up from the ground. And in cases where the root doesn't happen to s actually intersect with the position that the sapling was, let's say the sapling was on that block there when this tree grew, the sapling survives. And in TFC that's crucial because saplings take so long to mature. So in essence you can chop the tree down and be left with a mature sapling ready to spring up at any moment. So what I'm thinking is, and it, you know, occasionally the trees grow and they grow over the sapling and it's gone. But I think we cut down about three or four trees in a row. And it was only like the third or fourth one where the sapling was munched. So that's a plan for today, is to get a load of mangrove saplings and build like a purpose-built sort of giant mangrove. Or else, do we just want to get rid of all of these saplings? I mean, are we trying to grow any of this wood? It's kind of nice, I suppose, to have a little bit of every wood type growing in the background down here. One of the other things we absolutely need to do today is get another bladder. We need to go hunting for um, some animals to kill. So we'll probably start with that. Uh, because it would be good to get our water situation sorted out and it was over here in these plains was where we last saw animals so I'm thinking we jump in our boat and head over there now but yeah and last but not least then in today's episode the other thing I would like to look at but as mentioned previously is note blocks yeah because we've got a bit of cryolite so we can make a few note blocks we only want a few but a few would be nice but I think more crucial than the note block will be the repeater which, yeah, we can totally make... Rep God, repeaters are cheap in this pack. Yeah, look, even comparators. I don't think they were that cheap um, in in Reloaded. So that's that's good news. So yeah, point of business number one, bladders and meat. Uh, point of business number two, tree farm. And point of business number three, note blocks. So one of the things that I think it was Gailmere who was... Uh, informing me and enlightening me of on the stream, shout out to Gailmere, was, let, let's take this with us actually so we don't lose it, um, was that the whether or not animals drop bladders is related to your butchering skill. And as an expert, we should have a lot more animals dropping bladders now than we, than we used to. So I think this is, these planes are where we saw animals before we're gonna have to be careful it might be predators I mean obviously what would be really ideal would be is if we found some on the actual homeland <laughs> like in there we haven't explored that bit yet or up or there but I mean it's, it's a lot further to travel on foot that kind of distance and ultimately you know we don't actually want to familiarize animals right now we want to immediately kill them so <laughs> oh, with that in mind Let me grab some more clay I might just grab all this clay, you know. All right, not giant amounts there, but um, some. Good chance looking at the lack of urns that this is one of the ones we already came to. 
think I remember this spot actually with the water on that side of us. This is probably exactly why I thought there were animals here is because I remember this precise spot. Do you know what I mean? Ah, right. So those are definite predators up there. Those lions. I'd like to kill them. So let's get our bow and arrow out and see if we can't do some sharp shooting here. Oh, look at that first hit. Oh, look, we did get the broken leather flask this time. Interesting. Last time, I swear we, it consumed it when it broke. Okay. All right. Anyway, that's fine. Unless there's, like, more animals that we can't see from here. Yeah, there is actually another line over there. Also, this dude still isn't... They, these ones aren't actually dropping bladders. Oh, yeah, and there are more of them than I thought. Yep, and they're not dropping bladders, so I guess never mind. Let's not kill those guys anymore. Maybe have a go at the at the camel. Feels kind of morally wrong. But let's do it. No bladder from the camel either. Alright, so I think because it's night time now, this little guy wants to play. Okay, two arrows got to kill those, so that's alright. Again, though, three different species and still no bladders. Hmm. We're kind of, I think, like, the one that I'm sure of is deer, right? Deer almost always. Okay, this little chap might. And by little chap, I mean giant cow. There's actually quite a few of them here. So these guys would be good to tame, but... I don't think we're going to be asked to bring them back to... Let's... This one's literally removed itself from the pack. Yes! They, this, this, okay, these guys do drop bladders. Alright, let's kill them all. And just get a little stock of bladders, I think. I think probably at the end of the day, we'll just kill these animals because we will make another base in a more temperate, or slightly less temperate, <laughs> whatever the phrase is. Somewhere that's a bit colder. Um, when we go into the steel age. Um, so, you know, this jungle base here, probably keeping animals in, in the jungle is is not the one. So, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll acquire our jungles in it. So we'll acquire our animals in a different base location, I think, at some point. Um, and if we look here, yeah, we can just go back over the ocean. Okay, sick. All right, let's do that. Right, so that's a huge amount of meat. So... You know, actually, I think we should go to one of those locations where we located the halite, which is salt. And let's go and mine tons of salt and see if we can salt all of this meat before we cook it and store it away. I think that would be nice. All right, we're back home. We can definitely do that. And get that guy filled back up. The next move, I think, is to look at how much salt we actually have at the moment. 16 pieces look at all this meat okay the beef lasts a bit longer which is good because we've got a lot of that so that's a seven days it's going to double it yeah let's salt all of this then 28 yeah see that this definitely needs to happen to all of this meat whether we cook it immediately or not let's salt it all and then and then cook it i think so let's go get more salt right now we need to go round to that bit there there's exposed halite right there uh, there's more exposed halite there but quicker to get to that one and there's also exposed rich lemonite there but probably we'll leave that for another day um, I actually before we do go we, we should just cook up the, the salted meat that we actually have here um, the stuff we've already salted huh Maybe is is this particular brand of meat not not cookable in these ovens potentially? Apparently not. It's not because we've salted it already, is it? Any thoughts on that? Let me know. I'll just have to use the old-fashioned um, cooking them one at a time on a campfire for now, I suppose. Okay, right. This is actually awesome. The the combination of salting and cooking this meat has um, created insane, look, so 36 days 
they're gonna last in the in the vessel now whereas it was the same as this feline stuff wasn't it, it was 13 days we boosted it up by over 20 days um, just by salting and cooking we need to pull all of the charcoal out of that guy but we'll do that um, when we get back the urgent thing is to get the salt get it onto this meat and get the meat all cooked and salted so yeah let's go get some salt well right here we are salt mining on the coast there's actually this looks to be yeah I, th I think we should be able to get quite a decent amount although are we only are we only we're getting one piece of halite but then how many pieces right then we get twice as much out of it when we grind it okay cool yeah i think we should end up with quite a lot here it's not going to be the funnest stuff to mine though because you have to jump in and out of the water um but yeah we'll get a load yeah i mean look at this just pulling up just a small layer of dirt or oh, sorry a small layer of sand and gravel exposes just huge amounts of it and un directly under the surface there um so yeah i think we can get quite a lot quite quickly here All right, sweet, sorted. So we've got another charcoal pit to um, dig out here. And yeah, if you look at what we've done with all this food now, so this beef's gonna last 51 days and we've got 41 pieces of it. So yeah, we, we have plenty of meat here. So I'll probably put a lot of that into a vessel into the cellar for the time being. Oh, just a quick note beforehand. Look, our cinnamon tree popped up. So that's actually a real nice look, having a cheeky little... And I think that, that, you know, that should produce some cinnamon. Now, whether we can eat the cinnamon raw, I don't, I don't really know. Ground cinnamon with dough and butter. Hmm, okay, yeah, maybe... Maybe it's not going to actually provide us with any fruit, per se, but anyway. Actually, just one more thing before the time lapse starts is these crops. A load of them did die the other day, and I just spotted those look pretty dead. So I think we're going to test every one that looks like they're, f they're finished. And, you know, if we hit F3, we can see the stage, broccoli stage 5. But there is no guarantee that stage 5 is the last stage for any of these dudes. So anyway, let's break in and see. Okay, we did actually get broccoli there. That's awesome. That's really cool. Um, are these guys finished? They look finished. Yes, chili peppers, tick. Okay, good to know. Broccoli and chili peppers, you guys are hardcore. Let's replant those guys. I think this is finished, please. Yes, it is as well. Oh, we are healthy. Look at us with all our food.
Cool, job done. So I think this serves its purpose. One one thing I'm slightly nervous about is it might not be wide enough at the edges. Like a really big tree, we might have some of the logs falling off the edge. That's the only potential design flaw I can see. Um, I think they're spaced out enough. I don't think they're going to get in each other's way, but I could be wrong. But you know, that remains to be seen, I suppose. Anyway, all, all, all we're going to do is just wait. But aren't these great? These, um, what are they? The Jasperite mud bricks. They're very, very pretty, these guys. And yeah, look, we're just, um, we're just over here. We're not far from our base, but it's, it's out the way. One of my agendas with choosing the place was I didn't want to compromise any of the natural beauty. But just a little platform over there that's only going to have more of the same trees on anyway. It's not going to be an eyesore, um, but it is going to be close enough that it should be loaded most of the time. You can see the saplings over there. Even the one in the far corner is loaded, I believe, so that's good. Um, so yeah, they're all going to be growing. And um, yeah, look, look at how these Jasperlite mud bricks match this wood. It's quite a match made in heaven. I mean, they're almost too close to build to get to build together with. You know what I mean? But um, we still got quite a lot of these. And in fact, I think there's all of the there's another batch of bricks that have dried as well. Anyway, let's let's move on now to looking at our our redstone. Oh right, yeah, we don't have very much at all. I thought I must admit I thought we had a bit more than that. So let's see where else we can get redstone from, perhaps. Right, Crylite will get us eight pieces though. Yeah, that's it. Those are our only options. There's no other like we can't like get it from I was wondering if any of these gems or something might be able to be distilled down into redstone. But no. But presumably there's no other uses for cryolite either. No, there isn't. Okay, well let's grind this down. And let's see about making just some kind of small note block contraption. I'd like something with ideally with like a daylight sensor. Something that goes off every day plays a little tune in the morning for us. Something cute like that. 
All right, so in order to get a daylight sensor, it looks like we're going to need some glass. And it looks like there's two ways we can do that by the looks of things. We can either um, get it from a stoked crucible here with sand. But the stoked crucible looks like we need to make a stoked kiln. So that looks like a pit kiln, but made of bricks, I'm assuming. But then this unfired crucible we put in it, we need to make on a turntable. And there's no recipe for the turntable. So it seems like a slight dead end, that route. Um, going down the stoked crucible route. I don't think we can make, you know, we can't make a normal furnace. That's just converting stuff back from dyed, so that's not a thing. So these shards, there's also no recipe there. So I think that's probably what's dropped when we break a block. And we can recycle them. So that leads me just to looking at this, at this molten glass here, which we would then pour into these molds. Right click on an, an empty mold onto any container holding molten glass. So I think this smeltery cauldron is what we need. Five iron sheets and two long rods. So why don't we give this a go? This thing looks cool. It looks like it's only used to make glass. I can't see, it doesn't seem to give any other recipes that it, you know, when you hit it there and press U on it there, it just literally shows glass recipes. But I think we, we can make a quick lime here by boiling up a calcite pot. And we can make uh, the potash, potash as well. Um, by cooking up a pots of wood ash. So yes, I think we I think we can basically go off on a tangent here to get our daylight sensor and go into the business of glass production. So let me make all the iron stuff first. We had some rods over here. No, we don't. We've only got short, so we need to make two long ones. So that's two ingots of iron. And then we'll need five sheets, which is ten. So we actually don't have enough. We need to make two more ingots. So we would need to process one of these blooms. All right, well, let's, let's do all that, and then I'll be right back. I think I will just keep this forge running just in case I mess this last bit up. That's probably good enough. Yellow white's good enough, I think. Let's go. Okay, so we need one sheet. Little, give them a little weld. And there we go, that's the final sheet. And then these guys need to be made into long rods. We have done before. There we go. Not the most efficient route, but it'll do. Probably could do like that. There we go, perfect. All right, all good. Let's salvage this and we should be able to make our cauldron now, I think chill everybody out a bit. There we go, the smeltery cauldron. Very nice. Where should we put this guy? Like, here maybe? That seems as good a place as any for now. Smeltery structure not formed. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> Let me do some research. <laughs> All right, so guys, I can't be sure, but I think this smeltery firebox sits underneath it and it uses fire bricks and we don't have, we don't have the stuff to get that yet. I mean, there seems to be very little online actually uh, suggesting how this thing works. Uh, it might need to be connected to an actual like tinkers looking smeltery, but then again, like, I don't think there's definitely not tinkers in this pack. If I hit smeltery, it's just those two items, right? And I, I have seen, a, there's a picture on Google Images of that thing on top of that thing. So I think this is the dude that, like, you, you, you put the fuel in and that's the dude that you make the glass in. So that's my guess right now. So for now, I think we may have just spent a lot of money on something we can't use. So that's a shame. Let's put it somewhere um, where it looks cool, at least. Yeah, I guess next to the anvil does actually look quite cool. So it's an expensive um, cosmetic piece for now. <laughs> and it does mean we can't actually make a daylight sensor. Um, 
yet. Alright, well, you know what? I think I found something that looks interesting. There's an instrument player. Can I get this guy to play the instruments I have for me like a jukebox? We can make this thing. We just need a chest. Yeah, we can make this thing right now. A redstone torch here. And then this should do it. Right, there we go. We got our instrument player. So, can this guy do the honours so we don't have to, like... The Sortar, hey, we've got that cool one in there. What's what's the one that we have in the frame? Dump rocks, okay. Well, let's let's go for the Sortar. I do like a Sawtooth wave. Okay, we'll just put it here for now. So, you take the instrument. It does take the instrument. Okay, and then I can just get it to play a tune so I don't have to actually hold the instrument. It'll just play it in the background, I'm guessing, right? Which is pretty fun, so... Let's pick something that we won't get demonetized for. There's a lot of songs here. I've just realized, actually, it might be able to play multiple instruments. I mean, I haven't even been able to make it play one thing yet. But it might be able to actually play all of our instruments. We should, we should put all of them inside here. <laughs> yeah, it does. It just munches them all. Okay. <laughs> okay. If I can get this thing to actually work right now, this is going to be fun. Maybe it does need to be powered. Oh! That works. Okay, it works. Alright. Let's put the lever on the other side. I think it will look cooler. The lever on that side. Um, it's got all three instruments in there. Let's uh, let's now play something we won't get um, demonetized for. Yes, Super Mario 64 main theme. Oh my god, look, Hallelujah is listed as being by Shrek. <laughs> oh, it's a travesty to music. Alright, well I've curated a little playlist of um, mostly video game tunes. I think I just squeezed in Takata and Fugue. Otherwise, it's just video game tunes. <laughs> so that's cool. Um, so, done. And now, wait, hold on. Repeat all and shuffle yes. Cool, and then. sync with itself. What? Not just the same tune again, surely. Would that just, by chance, it randomly selected the same one twice? It was just by chance. It had the same one twice. Bit of Takata and Fugue. Cheeky little bit of me channel. So if we just wander off. Okay, well, it's not note blocks, but it kind of served the purpose, didn't it? So I guess on that bombshell, everybody, thank you very much for watching. Take care, like, subscribe, share, and um, I'll see you very soon for the next episode. Be excellent to each other. See you later. Peace.